Hey folks, welcome back to Combo Class. I'm Demotro, and these are the first prime numbers, but I would argue that some of these prime numbers are actually more prime than others. There's a slightly different way that you can measure whether something is a prime number or not that results in these ones I circled still being prime numbers, but the ones I didn't circle no longer being prime. Now, typically, a prime number can be defined as a number that can't have a pair of factors that multiply into it unless that pair of factors includes the number one, being one times itself, or we could define primes similarly, but include negative numbers as possible factors, and then we'd use the same definition, but say that primes can't have a factor pair that multiplies into them unless it contains one or negative one, which we can call units in this circumstance. So when I say there's a slightly different way of measuring whether something's prime that results in some of these numbers, like five, no longer being prime, I mean that secretly, this kind of does have a pair of factors that multiply to get it that doesn't involve a unit like one or negative one. When we incorporate negative numbers in the mix, that's already like taking positive numbers and adding a new direction to look for possible factors in. So to find some sort of factor pair that makes a number like five and doesn't involve one of these units, maybe we need to look an even further, more different direction, like somewhere off the typical number line. Now there is a type of number that nicely fits this two-dimensional layout, which are the complex numbers, which involve the real numbers, as well as the imaginary numbers, and numbers that are combinations of those. But don't worry, what we're gonna do with imaginary numbers is very simple, and really all of the typical arithmetic rules will still hold, as long as we remember that if we ever see an I squared, I being the imaginary unit, that I squared can be simplified as negative one. When we're dealing with complex numbers here today, we can imagine each of them as a point on this plane that has some amount of real, positive or negative or zero, and some amount of imaginary, which is the amount of I. Now on the complex plane, if we imagine where grid points would be, the spots where both the real and imaginary amounts in a number are integers, these spots are known as the Gauss integers. And the typical type of integers have the typical type of primes as a subset, so you may wonder if there are Gaussian integers, are there Gaussian primes? Well, let's see what happens when we multiply a few complex numbers together. It's actually easier than you might think. We can use the same arithmetic rules that you're used to as long as we remember that thing about I squared simplifying to negative one. There is a certain type of pair of number that multiplies together in a very neat way. A number, some A plus B I, and what's called its complex conjugate, which is A minus B I. Basically the same thing, but with the imaginary portion having its sign flipped. Well, if we multiply together two numbers of this form, we get something neat. All the imaginary stuff here cancels out, leaving us with just a real answer. In fact, it's a real number that's exactly equal to a squared plus b squared. Let's look at an example. If I multiply 3 plus 2i and 3 minus 2i, I end up getting an answer that simplifies to 13. 
So could we say that these are factors of 13? In the realm of the Gaussian integers, there are four units, one negative one I and negative I. And if a number can only be factored into pairs that involve one of those units, it's considered a Gaussian prime. Basically the same definition as the typical type of prime numbers, just changing what we're considering as possible factors, now allowing complex numbers, and what we're considering as units, now having I and negative I included. And 13 is not a Gaussian prime because it could be factored in this way. And similarly, if I do 2 plus I times 2 minus I, that gets me 5. And that is one possible factor pair that doesn't involve any units that multiplies to 5, making 5 also not a Gaussian prime. However, it turns out you can't do that with these ones I circled, and in general, an infinite subset of regular prime numbers. If you multiply a factor pair to try and make one of these, it has to involve one of those units, even if we allow all complex numbers as possibilities. And it makes you wonder, What's the rule? Which regular primes are Gaussian primes also? Well, remember that the way we reached the ones we saw earlier was by multiplying complex conjugates that resulted in a squared plus b squared being our result the sum of two squares. Now to see an interesting pattern about numbers that can be expressed as the sum of two squares, we're gonna have to look at what remainder numbers would have if we divided them by four, which is known as being in mod four and seeing what value a number is congruent to. For example, numbers that are one more than a multiple of four are congruent to one mod four. And if we look at what happens when we square a number of any of these possibilities, any of these possible values when squared either end up congruent to zero or one in this mod. And it's true that any square number is either a multiple of four or exactly one more than a multiple of four. Now, if we add up two possible squares, that's going to be adding either something congruent to zero in that mod with another zero, or a zero and a one, or a one and a one, because those were our possibilities for squares, meaning that the sum of two squares must be zero, one, or two in mod four. And it's true that if you add up two square numbers, your result will never be exactly three more than a multiple of four. Anyway, what this tells us here is that if we multiply a number with its complex conjugate to get some real result, the real result will never be congruent to three mod four. Now it turns out that an even deeper version of that link has been proven and that if and only if a regular prime number is congruent to three mod four, it is also a Gaussian prime. And Gaussian primes can also be Gaussian integers that aren't real numbers, so here are some general rules that have been proven for which Gaussian integers will turn out to be Gaussian primes. So given that some primes remain prime, whether we just look at the real number line or include a deeper level of all of the Gaussian integers, whereas other primes like the, oh, like the ones that I didn't circle don't have that trait, I think that it's safe to say 
that some primes are more prime on average than other primes. And that's about all for today's episode. Thanks for joining me to learn some things about prime numbers. If you want any extra combo content, make sure to check out my other Demotro channel where I put out shorts and live streams and other assorted bonus videos. And special thanks to the people who help make all of my videos possible such as my Patreon supporters and YouTube members on that Demotro channel. And thanks to everyone who comments or even just everyone who watched this whole thing. I love you and I'll catch you again soon.